Good morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. If you're watching us live on Facebook, thank you for that. And if you're checking us out elsewhere, we are online, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. That's where we upload these shows. You can check out audio and video versions there uh, at your leisure. And of course, Facebook does keep these online and rolling throughout the day. Getting into your traffic this morning, minor delays on at the 1012 split on I-12 westbound. Also some heavy delays starting at Sherwood, starting to get traffic backed up to about Range Avenue, which is causing some on-ramp delays. Does look like 4-H Club Road, River Road, and 190 are still clear. 64 into Central looking pretty clear as well with some minor delays on Greenwood Springs. Uh, school traffic, of course, this morning pretty heavy, pretty loaded, especially in front of Live Oak High School. Uh, on Highway 16, as well as on Highway 16 in front of Denham Springs High. There is, of course, some traffic on Burgess Avenue, as well as 190 in front of Walker High School. Currently 71 degrees, 86 degrees is your high today, 67 your overnight low. And you're going to have some clouds this morning that are going to get burned away by this afternoon. Going to bring out some afternoon sun. Of course, as, we, as you've noticed, I'm sure we're experiencing some of that uh, heavier weather. It's a little warmer than it did uh, get Friday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, and that's going to continue throughout the week. 5,010 people have early voted through two days of early voting. As you might remember, it started on Friday. It will uh, run through October 27th, which is next Tuesday. No Sundays, so no. it did not run, or the early voting polls did not run yesterday. They will not run next Sunday, either the 25th. So please keep that in mind. Good morning, Miss Margaret. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Thanks for joining us as well. So of those 5,010 who have early voted so far, 3,287 have voted at the Denham Springs Walker Branch Library. 1,722 have voted at the registrar's office. According to some, I guess you can call it eyewitness accounts or on the ground accounts, it's not too bad. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. The registrar voters asked individuals not to to be worried about the line or the way that it appears. Uh, a lot of that just has to do with COVID-19 mitigation and they're not allowed to let as many people in at once. Uh, the line moves rather quickly. Now, interesting thing about it is not a whole lot of people have, have sort of pushed back against the mitigation efforts. Everybody's wearing a mask, doing their social distancing thing. So the Registrar of Voters has been pleased with that. Now, of course, the polls are open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. Kicking back off again this morning at 8 o'clock, so you can go early vote. Registrar of Voters had expected about 30,000 people. As of right now, on track to hit about 25,000. Still quite a bit, just shy of 30% of registered voters in Livingston Parish. So that's going to be quite a turnout, uh, considering it was roughly 70% turnout uh, during the last presidential election. Of course, during that time, the parish had the Jubin Crossing location, which I believe is now a five below. Uh, there in uh, Jubin Crossing, where you could go early vote. Uh, of course, that was post flood, so it was a different kind of year. Kind of interesting. Roughly eighteen thousand people early voted for the presidential election in two thousand and sixteen. Speaking of elections, there's been sort of a back and forth issue uh, between two individuals. We've done podcasts with both of them. William Scott Dykes and Colt Four are both attor local attorneys that are running for the 24th, 21st Judicial District Court, uh, and they've traded mailers. Uh, it's kind of an interesting situation. Uh, both gentlemen were Democrats and switched to Republicans. Uh, Mr. Colt Four switched in 2008. Mr. William Scott Dykes switched in 2015. Mr. Dykes sent out the first mailer, and Mr. Colt Four sent out the second. However, uh, there have been reports that we are digging in on, and we'll have more to talk about later in the week, uh, that Mr. Colt Four acquired uh, or sent out something that was not properly redacted regarding Mr. William Scott Dykes, which could cause problems, especially for Mr. Dykes himself. So we're going to be digging into that, uh, but it is important to note that both men uh, switched to the Republican Party, Mr. Colt Four in 2008 and Mr. William Scott Dykes in 2015, since that seems to be the um, crux of the mailers that they both sent out. Football did wrap up another week. Uh, you can check out those scores on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash sports. 
Looks like everybody's going to be jumping into district this week. We're going to be sitting down with Mr. Rob DeArmond on Wednesday to talk about what's coming up this week and how teams have prepared for their district slate. Another piece of interesting news, the state swim meet. Of course, swimming being one of those sports that was, was affected by early phases of COVID, but those phases had been pushed out by the time swimming started. So they're kind of on their uh, on the regular swimming path, I guess you can say. Their state meet has been moved to Shreveport, so please, uh, if you are a parent or you follow swimming, please keep that in mind as the state swim meet, uh, I believe, was going to be uh, in Baton Rouge this year, but it has been moved to Shreveport. Good morning, Mr. Taylor, and good morning, Ms. Karen. Thank you both for joining us. Getting into your COVID-19 statistics real quick, 175,781 cases, 5,550 deaths, 2,000,000. 589,510 total tests. 161,792 have recovered. 550 hospitalized on 60 ventilators. In Livingston Parish, 4,085 cases, 79 deaths on 44,384 tests. It does not look like, according to uh, initial reports, of course, there is still roughly eight days left of the uh, Living, or Louisiana Legislative Special Session. It also ends October 27th, just like early voting. And they're right now uh, have passed a spending bill, but we'll get to that in a second. We have discussed over the past few weeks uh, several bills that have been coming through the House and the Senate trying to limit the governor's ability, not necessarily to declare an emergency, although some went so far as to do that, but the ones that have uh, at least garnered some momentum are mostly just about limiting his ability to expand or uh, continue an emergency declaration without some sort of approval uh, from the legislature or some sort of input from the legislature. And there are some bills that have uh, had serious traction that would have suspended the current emergency declaration for COVID-19. As of right now, good morning, Ms. Rhonda. Thanks for joining us. As of right now, there are no bills that look like they will garner a veto-proof majority. So any of these bills that for instance, the one coming out of the House, which is sponsored by uh, House Speaker Clay Schecksneider, who represents the southern part of Livingston Parish, uh, that was supposed to suspend, beginning October 27th, any and all COVID-19 mitigation efforts because it would have suspended the emergency declaration at least for 30 days to see what would happen. As of right now, that does not have a veto-proof majority. There is another bill that has started that had started to gain speed, probably still has some speed, uh, that would have suspended the fire marshal's ability to enforce COVID-19 mitigation efforts and punishments until next June. Uh, as of right now, neither one of those bills looks like they're going to be able to get a veto-proof majority. The bill out of the Senate from Senator, uh, well, Senate President Paige Cortez would have established an uh, extra seat on the governor's sort of task force that talks about emergency uh, declarations and why they're expanding it. That does not look like it'll get a feed to approve majority as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what the governor does with these bills uh, if and when they reach his desk. Not entirely sure what the legislature is going to do with them, but right now, as we mentioned, they're having to jump into spending bills, which was really the crux of this special session was to see how to adjust the budget and what sort of spending they're going to have to do to try to catch up with COVID-19. Right now, there is a spending bill uh, that has been passed that will go to the governor's desk. It's $100 million, $85 million of which is going to go to the state unemployment fund. The state has already borrowed $11 million from the federal government and uh, is poised to borrow more. Uh, even with the $85 million allotment, they're expecting a total borrowing of $233 million by next August. So, uh, you know, if you look at those numbers, still about $140 million short. $5 million went to tourism promotion, and $5 million went for local government aid. Now, there are some legislators who said they weren't quite sure what was in those spending bills, uh, so hopefully maybe they read that story, uh, but it does look like things got, wires got a little crossed at the legislature. They got pretty caught up in trying to pass those bills about the emergency declarations, and now they're trying to catch up with the spending bills in the budget. Again, they have they still have about eight solid days. Uh, it will be the 27th at midnight when things need to be signed off. Uh, so they're going to be getting the you're going to be seeing a lot of spending bills, a lot of budget and a lot of budget amendments coming out this week, more than likely uh, as the legislature tries to wrap up 
uh, of course, before we get into the final push towards the November 3rd election. Getting back in your traffic this morning real quick, please remember minor delays at the I-10-12 split, especially if you're heading westbound. That's caused heavy delays that are backed up past uh, O'Neill Lane, almost all the way to range. So you're going to be it's slow going on I-12 this morning. Please don't shoot the message. Uh, that is putting on-ramp delays in and around Livingston Parish, especially at 447 and Range Avenue. Forage Club Road, River Road, and 190 are looking clear. 64 and Central looking relatively clear. Now, that, that just means they're flowing. Uh, Greenwell Springs minor delay there in the curve. Those school delays at least starting to dissipate a little bit as we get near the 8 a.m. hour. Uh, of course, it's always heavy in front of Live Oak High School, uh, Denham High School, and Walker. Burgess Avenue and 190. It's currently 71 degrees. 86 degrees is your high today. 67 your overnight low. Looking at some morning clouds today uh, with some afternoon sun as it warms up. It's going to be a warm afternoon. One last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor in the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning for the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. Want to remind folks that we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. You can also find these, well, we're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. You can find these shows on our podcast page, which is free. We have a coronavirus page, which is free, and a breaking news page, which has federal, state, and local accident and arrest news for you to check out. We do hope you have a great day. Uh, please keep an eye on our website for legislative updates as we kind of get into this final portion. And we will also continue to give updates on early voting. Please remember to go vote. It'll be a lot easier if you early vote than if you wait until November 3rd. Those polls are probably going to be packed. There's a lot of people haven't early voted yet, especially considering the turnout. Uh, but please remember, try to go do that 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily at the Livingston Walker Branch, uh, excuse me, at the Livingston Registrar Voters Office or the Dem Springs Walker Branch Library. Remember, 7 a.m., I mean, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Whew, man, not delivering that message well today. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, not Sundays, at the Denver Springs Walker Branch Library or the D Livingston Parish Registrar of Voters Office in the town of Livingston. Please remember to go vote. So far, 5,010 have early voted. One last time, hope you have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow morning.